Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you're watching Ernest Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. When last we left off, we were on a cross-country journey. We were headed from somewhere around Falkreath to Darkwater Crossing. Our end goal here is to go to Fort Amal and try to acquire the Bound Bow spell from deep within the depths of that fort. We're going to wrest it from the control of a bunch of necromancers in there. And right now we are on the road overlooking Fort Amal. We can actually see it from the road here. We can also see dark water crossing below us, but we have a ways to go, a number of switchbacks, and I'm anticipating some dangers along the way. This is actually a, quite an important episode for several reasons. One of which, of course, is that we will finally be acquiring the spell that will get heavy use from us as an arcane archer uh, coming up in the future here. It also marks the end of Chapter 1. some wolves down here we're going to have to deal with. We are going to attempt to deal with them from up here. Give ourselves a break. <laughs> now he's on the move again. Oh, there's another one. Okay. We may pause a moment here and a third. Oh, we've got three to deal with. That's one. We draw those wolves in. We should be able to bag another one here. All right. Oh, the last one is on to us. He's going to be in our face in moments. Ow. Two shots. He got two shots at us before we took him out. Not ideal, but at least it wasn't three on one. So yes, this is part seven in our series. So as of the next episode, we will be officially beginning chapter two, part one. I hope you've enjoyed chapter one so far. I've enjoyed making it for you. And I'm not sure what is to come in Chapter 2. I do know that Chapter 2 will certainly mark the beginning of our quest with the Dark Brotherhood, and we'll see where that leads. I have a feeling it's also going to lead us deeper into the dark recesses or the underworld of Skyrim, uh, the realms of thieves and the assassins. All right, we've got a bear in the trail up here. I'm going to try to find a spot where I can sort of scope out the situation here. Pretty sure he's he's just laying in the road, blocking our path. Bears are going to take more arrows to kill than a wolf, and they are very powerful and alarmingly fast. So a bear is not something that I want to tangle with at this level if I can help it. Um, the only way I would do that is if I had some kind of huge advantage. So we're going to look around here to see if there is any way in this scenario to gain that sort of advantage. If there's not, then we will find an alternate route. We are not going to be able to get very close without alerting him to our presence. So I'm thinking this is not a fight that we want to engage in, so we are going to find an alternate route. We are going to allow him to keep his sunny spot there, take his nap. 
we're going to take this alternate trail. I believe this is just a shortcut. It's a couple of switchbacks that take us down to the road we would have we would have been on anyway. So I think that's all right. Here's a beautiful view of where we're going. You can see Fort Amal there in the distance. I want to thank all of you who've watched uh, the last few videos I've put up. It's been quite a glut recently. Uh, there were several days when I didn't post anything at all, and then uh, suddenly I opened the floodgates and put out two episodes in rapid succession and produced a third. All right, this bridge, if I remember correctly, there's also another great big bear that likes to hang out by this bridge. So we are going to use the wildlife to our advantage, see if we can scare some goats across this bridge and sort of confirm confirm that he's there waiting for us. Get a move on. Now we're going to follow these goats and just observe to see what happens when they cross that bridge. I hate using innocent animals as cannon fodder, but better them than me, I always say. see what happens. We need a better vantage point here. Okay, here he goes. He's almost across. There's the bear, right there. Alright, he's there. So we need a new way to deal with him. And I'm pretty sure this axe isn't going to help me. <laughs> Miss Q there. What do I need? What am I looking for? Oh. Alright. Let's see if we can find a good spot. I'm thinking that if we can find a good overlook spot, we might be able to... We might be able to use misdirection to draw him down to the river below, and if we can draw him down to the bank and get him interested in something else, we can either take him out or distract him long enough that we can scoot across that bridge and just get around him. our objective. Okay, he's over there somewhere. So I'm just going to put an arrow down here, see if I can't attract him to this ledge across the river from us. Okay, I got his attention. I'm not seeing him yet. comes. I don't know if I can hit him from here. I think I might be coming up short. So let's put one into the rocks. I'm going to try to draw him as far down here as I possibly can. Give myself a shot I can't miss. I think we got him stuck. I think he's stuck on a ledge there. He's a sitting duck. So we are going to clear the deck. There he goes. All right. We have made that bridge safe to cross. Not only for ourselves, but other travelers, and certainly for goats. Much safer for goats now.
right. Well, it, if nothing else, it certainly demonstrates the effectiveness of that technique. Taking our cues from the wildlife, we can see where the dangers are in many cases. Work this time. Alright, I believe this bridge ahead of us goes to Darkwater Crossing. I thought I might go over there, um, chew the fat with some of the locals for a little while. I do not want to approach the fort until nightfall. I thought I might be able to kill a little time. There's our fort over there. Kill a little time in Darkwater Crossing, talking to the locals, maybe picking up a quest or two. Um, see what they've got here that I can use. Hey, chicken. You're looking for work? We could use an extra hand in the mine. Just bring me any corundum you dig up. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I can use this, though. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of iron ore we've collected previously. We can make ingots out of all this. The ingots are actually lighter weight than the ore itself, so this will be an advantage for us. What is it? So they're mining corundum here. Corundum can be mixed with iron to create steel, I think. Never done it. But I've heard that it works. Annika used to help more with my she here. Yeah, locked. I know that she has some quests. We can pick up a quest from her. Go in the mine and see who's in here. Wow, we are almost halfway to level 16. How do you feel? I think you might be sick. Oh, I'm sick. I used to be an adventurer in my day. That's right. I used to explore all over. I'm the one who originally found the mine Darkwater Crossing was built around. I was actually scouting a bit the other day, old time's sake. Spite a brigand heading back to his camp. Up for a little hunting? My husband is being a sad stick, so I can't go myself. We'll pick up that quest. I don't know that we'll do it now. Fair though. enough. Farewell. here just a little more hi I've never seen you around here before are you a miner too I am NOT a miner Saunders takes care of me when mom's not around I keep hearing stories about Morrowind sounds like a wretched place those falls dangerous place Derkethus thought he could find some good fish in the pools. Haven't heard from him in a long while. This mine is only a few years old, but I've been digging up ore for over a century. We're getting to the point where the tunnels are getting deep into the rock. People complain of bad coughs and foul air. I've seen this before. We need some medicines to combat the ore dust. I was about to send a message to Windhelm for aid. A century Thank of you. mining? Take it to Quintus wow. in the White File. Alright, we got another quest. 
I'm lucky enough that none of my friends have been killed. Of course, we have soldiers coming through all the time. All right, then. Dorkethus used to take me diving well, way down deep in the river. Let's take a look here before we go back to the surface. Yeah, it's all corundum. interested to see what they'll give me for it. No idea. So, I've been giving some thought Saunders to what our strategy is going to be here at Fort Amal, and I believe I've got a fairly sound strategy that requires, I try to think of it as <coughs> you know, a level in stealth of, <coughs> you know, maybe in the 50s, and an invisibility potion. I plan on going in there, getting that spell tome that we need, and not firing a single shot and getting out unnoticed. That is my plan. And if it works, it'll be great. If not, I'll be quite dead. So we will see how it goes. Yep, there's our rock joint. Let's see if we got something to deal with that. Uh, yes. Much better. All right. Let's get this party started, so to speak. Now, the first thing that we have to think about is where do we enter from? Fort Amal has two possible approaches that I'm aware of. One is right in the front door and one is through a break in the back wall. I'm going to check out this break in the back wall, although I'm skeptical that this will be, our, be the right choice for us because the entrance to the prison where we need to go is directly across the courtyard. This is going to mean that if we go in the back, we'll be concealed coming in, but we'll be forced to cross the length of the courtyard in the open to get to that door. I think the alternative for us might be going right in the front door. If we stay close to the wall and stay in the shadows, I'm thinking we might be able to pull it off just right through the front door, but I want to check out this back door first. The other key thing here is that we're going in after nightfall. This is not a broad daylight type of operation, so we're giving ourselves you know, ourselves every advantage we can, and uh, Fleet is no fool. He's not going to tangle with necromancers if he doesn't have to, so... Now let's have a quick look around. Alright, there is the front door. We're looking directly at it, and you can see there's a necromancer on the wall above the door. Hard to see in the dark, but he's there. There is also one inside the courtyard directly to our left. And directly across from us, uh, from this entrance here, is the door to the prison where we need to get. So I am going to go in the front door. And I think we can use some muffle here. I've got one invisibility potion in reserve. And I've got Dragon Skin set to my bumper in case I need to fire that off. If I am discovered, that'll absorb some of the damage I might take from the Magicka. And then we, we implement a run like hell policy. I'm hoping it won't come to that, however. So I'm going to wait just a little bit longer here, make sure it's good and dark late at night. And then we begin. Start with a muffle. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I am going to get up as close to the wall of the fort as I possibly can, as soon as I can, and then make my approach to the front door 
right along the wall. We are going to hug the wall as close as we possibly can the entire way. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hotkey my invisibility potion. I only have one of them, so my plan... I, I've got an idea when I'm going to use it, um, but I'll discuss that further in a moment. First I've got to get into a position where it's even going to matter. <laughs> All right. Now we are on our approach to the front door. The front gate is wide open. There's nothing blocking our way. So we are going to stay to the shadows. We are directly underneath the guard right now, but with our combination of muffle and stealth levels, I think we're okay. Now we're going to turn the corner here and we're going to hug this wall to the left. Stay in the shadows. In this way we're avoiding the guard above and the necromancer directly across the courtyard from us by staying in the shadows. And that is going to put us right in front of the door. Now, when we get in, my objective is I'm going to use my bow to create a distraction. I'm going to draw any enemies away from the bucket where I need to get. I'm going to stealth up to that. I'm going to take the bucket, everything in it. I'm going to take all that trash. I'm going to hit the invisibility potion, and I'm going to make my way out. That's the plan, anyway. Muffle is still in force here. So I've got two guys. I'm going to put them down this corridor. It's important, because one of them is directly in front of the bucket where the spell tome is. See? There he goes. Okay, now we make our move. Take it all. Bucket, lantern, book. Hit the potion, and we are out. Back to the door. Now we exit exactly the same way that we came in. Now we're going to hug this wall to the right this time, following our same path. And we are going to scoot out the door and then hug this wall to our left. And we're going to follow the outside wall of the fort until we get all the way to the back where we started from. See that? I got too far from the wall. And the eye opened up. Our reticle activated, indicating we weren't hidden anymore. So we're going to wait for a moment. Make sure we understand what's going on. And then we'll continue. All right. I think we're home free, ladies and gentlemen. I do believe we have done it. Not a shot fired, and nobody is any the wiser. A fort full of necromancers who any one of them probably could have slaughtered us. So, let's see what we've got. Hopefully the tome was in that bucket, because I just rifled through there really fast. There it is. Let's learn it. Very nice. Now we've also got some junk to get rid of. There's a bucket. Oh, a basket too. Get rid of the bucket. And somewhere there's a lantern. There was a lantern inside that bucket. There it is. Junk. Gonna jettison all that trash. And we'll check our new spell out. There it is. It's a depth level. We will not be able to cast this spell without our mage hood on, so that's going to be a necessity for us for now. There it is. Done deal. Simple as that. <laughs> I may not have even needed that invisibility potion to make my escape, but I, I popped it just to be safe because distraction only lasts so long, and when we were going toward the bucket, they had their backs to us, and, and Fleet was able to get up there, grab the stuff, but on the way back, they may have been making their return to their original positions again, and we would have been a sitting duck, so... Conjuration. So we've got the Bound Bow, Novice Conjuration, and we've also got Mystic Binding. So we're going to 
reap the benefits of that extra damage when we use this bow. So we've done it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes Chapter 1 of Aranus Arcana. And we've also reached the end of this episode. I want to thank you all for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. To all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. Until the next chapter. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.